Rainbow Six Actual, this is Craig Jensen, also known as Blackbeard, and you're watching PRD Blackwatch on YouTube. Don't forget, we got a job to do. Now I'm taking point, get behind me. Hello everyone, my name is Ali A, and welcome to another episode of Top 10 Fortnite Clips 420. In this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Vicente Souza, also known as Capita. He's an operator that a lot of people have been asking me for a very long time to make a guide on, and I'm finally going to get my finger out and put it together. So, Capito is a one-armor, three-speed attacker, and he is a member of the BOPE CTU, Brazilian CTU. And he has access to two primary weapons, the Para 308 Assault Rifle, and the M249 LMG, and the secondary weapon is the PRB-92, that's the Parabellum-92. And this is based on the Taurus-92, I believe, which is actually not a Beretta M9, which some people will tell you it's not the Beretta, it's definitely a Taurus. And you can tell the difference because the Beretta has its magazine release right next to the trigger, whereas the Taurus has its magazine release right next to the magwell at the bottom of the pistol. Anyway, so the Para 308 is a strange assault rifle because it used to be my favourite gun in the game and then they kind of tweaked it a little bit, they made it more vicious in the recoil department and they made it much less powerful in the damage department. It was overpowered but they neutered it quite viciously. Now they brought it back up to have similar damage to what it used to have but the recoil is still very difficult to control so your best bet if you're going to use this weapon and I would recommend it out of the two is to put the muzzle brake on. The M249 LMG, which is the saw, is a pretty solid LMG out of them all. They're all a lot better than they used to be, but it still has that LMG problem where it's quite slow, it feels a bit sluggish, and though you have all the ammunition, it's still got that recoil problem that the Para has. So personally, I use the Para. And one of the main reasons for that is that when you fire it, it sounds like someone is smacking a car door with a pneumatic drill. It's a ridiculous sound. It's very, very noisy, but I quite enjoy listening to it. And the PRB-92 is a nice pistol. High cap, reasonable damage. Uh, you've got two secondary gadgets, as with all people. He's got the Claymore, and he's got stun grenades. Stun grenades are viciously incompetent these days, because you throw them in a room where they should be easily flashed, and one nano particle of dust crosses into their retina and all of a sudden the light is now just blinding their t-shirt and not their eyes so you can't rely on stun grenades unless you're throwing them in 50 times into the room and just like absolutely melting everyone's optical sensors but in this case i would go with claymores just because you might get killed with it every now and again and capito is all about objective denial and so having a claymore there it's just another avenue for that particular thing that he does. His unique gadget is the TAC Mark Zero Tactical Crossbow. This is a fun gadget that's very, very flawed. And I'm going to go into that after I tell you the strengths and weaknesses of old Vicente. So he's a three speed. That's always a strength. It's not as much of a strength as it used to be, but it's still a strength. Especially when you're attacking, especially when you've got stun grenades, but uh, stun grenades are inconsistent. He is very good at objective denial and he can also provide long range smoke, a much longer range than with a normal smoke grenade. So that's something if you want to work with a glass but you don't want to be right next to the glass, can be quite useful. His weaknesses, he has an average weapon suit, average weapon suit with very high recoil and lacking damage. His gadget's quite clumsy. The way it works is fairly slow and it's also fairly risky. So you've got to be very careful when you're using this gadget and it's not necessarily going to give you the value that you get with other attackers, especially considering the economy is so filled with strong attackers at the moment. I think Capito just needs a little bit more to give him that edge over the others. So at the moment, this gadget doesn't really carry its own weight. And uh, because of his age, he suffers from arthritis. So you need to watch out for him just randomly collapsing to his knees when he's running into rooms and objectives. It is a bit of a problem sometimes when you're playing as Capito. Same with Thatcher, but he's not quite as fast as Capito. You know, Vicente really pushes his body into the old age. And so when he's going into these objectives, sometimes one cap can trap can be one too many. And he just kind of hobbles in towards the end of the round. So watch out for that. 
And the crossbow's biggest issue is the fact that it's an active gadget. It's like Zofia's one, but imagine if Zofia couldn't bounce her grenades off walls or couldn't bounce her concussive grenades off walls. And imagine how horrible that would be. Because you're using a gadget that could potentially be non-lethal. Really, the flame bolts, the asphyxiating bolts, which, by the way, when you shoot them, they detonate when you hit a surface and they set the place on fire, or, well, deprive it of oxygen, and you basically choke your opponent to death, although really we know it's just a big fireball. And um, they deal a lot of damage very quickly in that area, but it's quite a small area, and you put yourself at risk when you have to go out and launch the bolts at people. The other thing that's very difficult about the gadget because of its nature is that you do have to change ammunition in it between the smoke bolts and the asphyxiating bolts. The issue there is that with Zofia's lifeline launcher, it's literally a flick of a switch and that takes half a second to do, whereas with Capita's bolt launcher, you've got to pull the magazine out and put the other magazine in. And it's only an extra half a second, but an extra half a second when you're being pressured and the gadgets may be needing to be used very quickly before you switch to your primary again, is not very helpful, especially for an attacker who gets the most value out of his gadget when he's up against the enemy, up close, and pressure in, in dangerous situations. So that's something that needs to be changed in future to make him really effective. And that's the reason why he was in one of my how to fix videos back in the day. He's a flawed operator with a gadget that can be very valuable when it works, but it doesn't always work. The bolts also have quite a slow travel time. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's about the same travel time as Doc's uh, stim shot. So if you use Doc a lot, you'll understand the sort of speed that you're gonna get out of the bolts. It tends not to be a factor, but if you're trying to get someone who's running, uh, I wouldn't recommend it anyway because it's not a direct damage gadget. It's an AOE gadget and it should be used on stationary targets more than anything else or for area denial then you're going to struggle if you're trying to like trace a shot against someone with this because it is hard to predict. The crossbow is amazing for sight denial. If you've just gotten in on bomb and you know someone's trying to get back into the room, you can just shoot your bolt into a doorway, into a window, whatever, and that's going to deny them for that period because they've got two options. Either run in and if they've already been damaged, the likelihood is it will kill them or run in and take damage, or just sit and wait it out, and that's precious, precious time, which is where I would give you a little tip with regards to using the crossbow, and that is don't shoot two bolts in quick succession because they're gonna run out the exact same time and you're getting nothing out of firing that extra bolt unless you're firing it at a different area. If you're just blocking the one entrance, don't shoot them at the same time. Shoot, wait for it to run out, and then replenish it because otherwise it's just a total waste. Um, it's good for quick cover with smoke because if you're wanting to push into an area and you know there's a doorway that's maybe covered with enemies you can smoke it and then you can use that cover to get into places it's the same with a normal smoke grenade but obviously with it being your unique gadget you can just stick it in the pocket you can also double it up by putting flame inside the smoke and very occasionally you'll catch people running into smoke to try and come through and get that visual upper hand against you only to find that they flambe themselves along the way. So they're either gonna die or they're gonna take a bit of damage at least, but it's one of those things, it's a niche tactic, it doesn't always pay off. And sometimes you've just used half of your utility for absolutely nothing. One of the tips about using the crossbow, other than being careful, because really I cannot stress enough how vulnerable you are when you have this thing out. If someone runs at you and gets too close, if you set it off, you'll burn both of you down. And the chance is that you're not going to get away fast enough to deal with them. And if you're on your own, the round's over. You've killed yourself. The bolt has a really, really big hitbox. And I'm not sure why, but this is not a precise weapon. If it shoots just to the edge of a surface, and I'm talking still missing the surface but being very close to it, often it will still detonate on that surface. So if you're going for a shot that's going to be very tight, maybe through a drone hole from distance or something like that, be aware that there is the possibility that you'll just flat out catch that surface and your bolt will either be wasted or it'll be going off at a slightly different location that might not be useful if you do that. So be aware and be careful with your shots. Try not to take shots that aren't going to pay off for you. If you're wanting to use it for denial, try not to do what I did in one of the clips. You'll see me capturing the site on border in the lockers and there's a Cavera running on site and I decide to bolt it. It paid off, 
but there was no way of me knowing that she was so low on health. It really was a bit of a fluke there that she actually managed to die. Um, the one against Maestro was also kind of questionable, but that one I would chalk up to being more of a this gadget is inconsistent and dangerous to use in one-on-one -on -one situations type deal rather than it being necessarily the wrong call because he was behind the shield and it did do the damage I needed it to do because he ran back into cover probably forgetting that there was a massive roaring flame behind him ready to remove his arse and blister him repeatedly. So, Capitao. Strange pick. If you're looking to buy him as a DLC operator, you will have some fun. But I will just give you that warning, he's not the easiest beast to master. He's not necessarily a character that your teammates are going to thank you for. But when you do get those moments where you get kills behind cover against people, like you see with the bandit, that's a perfect example of the bandit on bank. When he takes cover behind that pillar, he's already taken some damage. There's no way he's getting out of that situation alive, or at least not without being in a crock pot. That's the kind of thing that he excels at, and also giving your teammates cover with the smoke. So... Have a think, decide if you're able to deal with the kind of recoil that he has. Um, if you are going to use him, recommend the para because, again, lovely sound and the muzzle brake is actually quite good if you're using it for tap fire. Um, other than that, that's all there really is to good old Vicente Souza. So, hope you have fun with him. Hope I see him a bit more in ranked and casual play now that you all know how to stunningly master this lovely character. There's going to be a paranormal video coming up soon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, apologies if you've been missing out on the guides i think i just took a little bit too much time off and because of that my videos have been kicked in the arse by the youtube algorithm so it'll probably take a while for me to build that back up again but that's fine anyway guys i've been ali a <laughs> so it's an awful joke i don't know why i ran with it but hey ho catch you in a bit Dos you guys bye bye